Good morning everybody! Welcome back to the YouTube channel and welcome back to a brand new vlog. We are back in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm in such a funny mood this morning. It is Friday. Happy Friday. I always say this ridiculous thing and uh, <laughs> I wake up every Friday and I say, shake it, it's Friday! <laughs> You're like, oh my goodness, it's not even 30 seconds and Leonora has lost the plot. But there is context to that. I went to the World of Equestrian Games in Normandy with Land Rover and I was presenting for the Luxury Channel and there was this incredible woman there. And you know when you just connect with somebody? She was just the most amazing, happy, positive woman. And she said, <laughs> shake your tits it's Friday and it has stuck so if you are watching this um, she'll know exactly who I mean uh, that has literally stayed within me and it's one of my favorite sayings now so you know it will make you smile anyway today is super exciting because my mother-in-law is arriving she's spending the week with us so what better reason to give the house a full zhuzh. So we are going to be creating an incredible tablescape, thinking pumpkins, thinking quince. We're gonna do a full refresh of the flowers. I've got a full on snippathon coming. I need to go for a bit of a forage around the orchard. I need to pick up some branches. I need to pick up some apples and I need to snip some Annabelle hydrangeas. We're going to create a mega floral arrangement for the kitchen just so that when you walk in, it just looks amazing. And then we're also going to do some vases down the table. And I also want it to be super cohesive with the arrangement in the hallway. So this is going to be super wholesome, super cozy, very autumnal, gorgeous, homey vlog. So pour yourself a glass of champagne because it is Friday. If not, a cup of tea will do. And let's do this. Okay, so first things first, I have cleared the entire table so that you can see it completely naked. I've got my assistants down here. Raffi is ready to rumble. Lancelot and Odie look rather tired of my behavior already. So these are the little things that I'm going to use to create the tablescape. So I've got some gorgeous little vases. I have showed these to you before. These are from Mrs. Alice. I have finally found my Hessian. I'm gonna create the tablescape on top of this runner. I've got these gorgeous little artichoke candle holders. I've got our pumpkins, these gorgeous little pumpkins. I've got a real pumpkin. <laughs> and then I have our normal little placemats. I love these, especially the little green edge. And I think I'm also going to use the Rebecca Oodle napkins again, just because I think it pulls the sort of orange yellow tones with the gorgeous burgundies and the greens will really tie in when we create the little vases of flowers. So these are all the little trinkety bits that I'm going to use to create the tablescape. I have also got some fresh florals that I bought yesterday, as well as the hydrangeas that I am about to snip in the garden. And I'm also thinking to get a few branches with some golden leaves. We're going to get our little basket and a haul of gorgeous flowers. So let's do that first and then we can get all cozy and warm and dry <laughs> creating this tablescape. Ranges. We're now going to head into the orchard, have a little bit of the forage to find some branches with some gorgeous golden leaves. I'm thinking that centerpiece in the kitchen needs to sort of, you know, we need to create a wow moment. So let's go and find it. Gorgeous. 
this, see whether we can find something relatively similar. my gorgeous basket full of goodies in here I found these stunning like orange golden almost like little hints of red in there and then I found these branches which I think will look great to create drama and then of course I've got these gorgeous marshmallow Annabelle hydrangeas I think I'm gonna have to come back for the apples because my basket is rather full so let's go inside and create this mega floral arrangement first then we can see what's left over the bird song is on fire. Honestly, it's been like a orchestra. Anyway, back to the point. Let's go and create this mega floral arrangement and then we'll come back, listen to the bird song and pick some apples. very funky looking quince here. He is absolutely beautiful. I feel if there are supermodels of the quince world, this would be it. So I'm going to take these in actually for the tablescape because they sort of go along with my sort of yellow orange uh, pumpkin theme and they are enormous. I feel like our quince are on absolute fire this year and I feel terrible. I really must do something with them other than use them as decoration for the table. So I have got to get back to doing my quince jelly, but trust me, it is a labor of love. Oh, perfect. I think that'll do. <laughs> oh, golly. We're going, we're maneuvering backwards. Oh gosh. Okay. Oh, and we're through. I am back in the kitchen, I've got my basket of goodies here and like I said we're going to create the big, oh where is the pointing, pointing there, <laughs> the big floral arrangement first. I've also got my wing woman here today. Yay! <laughs> Happy Friday, we love Fridays in this business. Happy Friday. We do, we love, do Fridays. love Fridays. We have a little rule that at, what sort of time do we do it? 4 30 on a friday is happy hour <laughs> so every week we always save these recipes on instagram we see these incredible like mocktails cocktails that these incredible creators create and we do them on a friday so this week we are going to do like a frozen espresso martini but with frozen uh, espresso cubes Anyway, if it works out, then I will tell you guys uh, the recipe, but we want to try it first. So let's get started with this floral arrangement. I'm going to use this big vase. And like I said, I'm going to use the branches to create the drama. And then I'm going to pop in the Annabelle hydrangeas and then the lilies. So I'm going to have a little bit of a play. I'm gonna pop you on a time lapse so that you can see what I'm doing and I will come back and show you the final arrangement all put together, probably in place, in a little bit. <laughs> I've had to move you just so that you can actually see what I'm doing. I felt like the other side, I was sort of playing around here and you actually couldn't see what I was doing. So I've popped in the large branches. I'm now going to place in the Annabelle hydrangeas and then the lilies just around the edge. So I'm gonna keep going and you guys can see how I create it on a time-lapse.
this is my autumnal floral arrangement. As you can see, we've used these gorgeous, like golden orange, slight little hints of green in there. The beautiful Annabelle hydrangeas. I picked up some gorgeous lilies yesterday from the supermarket, and one has actually, in fact, opened. And then you've got the branches at the back. I would quite like another branch to come up out of here, but then I think that it hides these beautiful lanterns. I'm quite happy with that. I've placed a real pumpkin underneath next door to a faux pumpkin. And then these gorgeous little painted pumpkins down here. And my Jo Loves Pomelo candle. So that is burning down there, making the whole house smell absolutely divine. So that is the central floral arrangement done. Do you know what? I am actually feeling another branch there. I'm gonna go and get another branch and I feel like that is going to finish it off to perfection. I'm now going to start the little vases for the tablescape. So I'm gonna use the rest of the Annabelle hydrangeas, the lilies, and some pretty other little dainty flowers that I picked up yesterday at the supermarket with these stunning lilies. So let's keep going. And we are back at the sink and I'm going to create these gorgeous little vases full of Annabelle hydrangeas. We're gonna pop a few lilies in there, put a few left over. And then yesterday, I picked up these gorgeous carnations. Aren't they pretty? They're tiny little dainty white flowers and I think that they're going to look beautiful down at the table. I'm also going to clean the quince. I'm going to get them all ship shape and pop them down the table as well. So, you know me, if you have been watching my YouTube channel for a while, you'll know that I do one little vase first, I use that as the example, and then I recreate all of the others. So that is my little florals for the table ready. How sweet and dainty these are. So lilies that snap or even hydrangeas that snap, you can always use them. They are not dead. <laughs> you can always put them into a much smaller vase. And like, look at those little lilies. Sometimes you can buy them and their heads have snapped off, but look, we have popped him into a beautiful little vase, into some fresh water, and he is going to open so beautifully. I'm now gonna pop down the Hessian table runner. I'm going to place the vases, and then we're going to dot all the little things in the middle, and it will start to really, really take place. So I will talk you through this bit, because I know that you guys always enjoy uh, the tablescapes. So I'm gonna find a tripod. I'm going to place you on it, and we're gonna create this tablescape together. So for a little bit of a change, I've popped you at this end of the kitchen. It's better lighting, the other way around was so dark, so this way that you can actually see what I'm doing. So first things first, I have my table runner, and as I said, I finally found the Hessian. It was literally buried uh, with a load of other <laughs> table runners that I literally, I couldn't find it. So, this is actually just a roll of Hessian. You can buy these off of Amazon. They are as cheap as chips and they are so fantastic because if you've got a tablescape where you haven't really got a runner that might go, Hessian is that sort of gorgeous, like natural uh, beige tone that so many different things go with. So it's something that's great to have in stock. So it's literally a roll. So I'll actually use two rows of it and then snip the end. So let's place this and then we're going to start adding everything else.
After a little bit of a struggle with the scissors, the Hessian runner is down. So let me show you. I've put two uh, rows of it, so it's created a little bit of a thicker uh, table runner. And as you can see, I really, really like the little frayed edges. I think that it looks so natural, and I think it's going to look great underneath everything else. So I'm gonna pop you back on your enormous tin of olives. And I'm probably going to pop you on a time lapse just so that I can get it all into position and then we will talk through all the details together. and lots of apples. One lone little soldier. He left. The last <laughs> man. <laughs> I've officially lost it. <laughs> oh gosh, well, he's little, but I'm sure he's going to be delish. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, look at him. He's enormous. Thank you. Right, do we think I can do it? I can quite get the apple. Right, are we ready? Yeah. I don't think so. Oh gosh, maybe I get the chair. Okay, what about if I wiggle? I need a helmet for this. Okay, what about if I use my branch? Okay, come on, Apple. He doesn't want to be made into <laughs> sweet treats. Oh. Oh, yeah. 
got him. <laughs> okay. for one day. Oh, what a workout, flinging myself at trees. <laughs> And my very autumnal table is finally finished. It's not my normal crazy tablescape. I don't want to uh, overwhelm <laughs> my mother-in-law when she arrives, but this is what I have created. So as you saw, I popped down the Hessian table runner and it is a little bit similar to my last tablescape. So I've done these beautiful vases of flowers. You've got these gorgeous dainty little pretty white flowers along with the Annabelle hydrangeas and those gorgeous lilies. When those lilies open I feel like it is going to make this tablescape. And then I've gone with the faux pumpkins, these gorgeous little painted white pumpkins and then the quince from all of our quince trees. I've also picked up these gorgeous golden orange. They're such pretty little leaves and I feel like it really makes it. It ties in the colour of the wood and also so the gorgeous leaves in this arrangement here. So let's keep going. As you saw, I popped down these placemats. These are my gorgeous Rebecca Oodle uh, napkins with the Mackenzie Childs napkin ring holder. Now I have shown these to you before. These are extremely special. These are the St. Louis water glasses. We actually only bring them out a few times a year, mainly Christmas. I've also popped down wine glasses because I feel like it makes a tablescape. There are a few more things that I would normally put down. I would actually add a balloon red wine glass and I feel like that really gives it gravitas. However, we do not need that today. Oh my goodness. <gasps> where have you been? And you are soaking wet. Odie, where has he been? You are so naughty. Okay. Um. I'm going to have to towel him down and I will be back momentarily. <laughs> you are so naughty! So naughty! I've also placed the Mrs. Alice pumpkins. I love these. These come out every year and they are just so versatile and fantastic. I love how these hydrangeas have worked. They're just absolutely enormous and those golden little edges, they're just drying out, which is beautiful. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is my tablescape. I've also added down the artichoke little candle holders along with three candlesticks. And I had the dark green candlesticks and I feel like they work. Sadly, I didn't have five. So I have paired it back and we have gone with three. And I did go rummaging <laughs> and I picked up another branch. And I feel that that has just made that arrangement. So you've got the larger leaves coming out the back. It's very whimsical, it's very loose. It looks like a woodland in the kitchen. And those leaves, are they not absolutely beautiful? They are so vibrant and they match the pumpkin to perfection. Right, that is the floral arrangement done and the beautiful tablescape. I now need to get these sweet treats done very quickly because I've got a lot to achieve before my mother-in-law arrives. So let's keep going. First things first, I am going to wash my apples and then I'm going to pick the perfect apples for our delicious sweet treat today. I think he looks absolutely delicious. I'm then gonna peel them and chop them and I will meet you back over by our cooking station. Bye. 
Welcome back to Leonora's Larder. <laughs> Is that now a thing? I'm not sure whether it's a thing. I feel so silly saying it. But anyway, welcome back to the kitchen. So today we are going to be making apple cinnamon blondies. Oh my goodness. So I actually saw the recipe on Megan Shelley's Instagram account. I follow her on Instagram. I'm obsessed with her recipes. And when I saw this, I was like, oh, that sounds absolutely delicious. Cinnamon, apples, nutmeg with a maple syrup cream cheese frosting. Oh, I was like, okay, I have to do this. But I've never made these before, so it's a little bit of an experiment and I thought that we could bake them together. So let's have a little talk through ingredients. We need unsalted butter, we need some Philadelphia, we need ground nutmeg, baking powder, we need maple syrup, I've got plain flour here, I've got the light brown sugar, we also need confection sugar and two eggs. Wait a minute, where is the star of the show? Where is the star of the show? Oh, he's over here. Oh, how could I forget the cinnamon? So we need an absolute lashing of cinnamon in this recipe. And I have actually gone a little bit overboard with my apples. It says on the recipe to do two apples. As you saw, we picked rather a lot more apples. So I've done three large apples because I want it to be just slightly more apple-y and then I'm going to literally douse them in cinnamon. So I have preheated my oven to 180 degrees and it says here, preheat oven in a large pan on a low heat, melt one cup of butter. Let's go and do that. Okay, so on a very low heat, we're gonna add one cup of butter and just allow that to melt very, very slowly. It's popping on my pinny. So whilst that is melting, we're gonna pop in the flour, the baking powder, the cinnamon and the nutmeg. So let's go through the quantities using a big bowl, switching on my scales underneath. And we need 290 grams of flour. We change the unit, make sure we're in, in grams making sure it's at zero. Okay, and I'm literally just gonna go ahead and pour this in, because that's quite a lot. So 290, 245, 56, come on. We want flour, 80, 290, perfect. It then says one tablespoon of cinnamon, but you all know me, we're going for two tablespoons. Oh wow, that's a lot, I'm gonna put touch more. We have more apples, so we need it slightly more cinnamony. Then we have nutmeg, and it says one teaspoon. Mm -hmm. One teaspoon of nutmeg. Baking powder, we need one and a half teaspoons. So one and a half, and then we need a pinch of salt. And there we go. Now that is our dried ingredients all together in a bowl. We are now gonna take our apples and the cinnamon over to the hob and we're going to saute the apples in the butter and sprinkle a little bit more cinnamon. So now that the apples are in with the butter and the cinnamon, we're just going to allow them to cook for about 10 minutes, just to ensure that they are cooked through and slightly soft when we add them to the dried ingredients. Already, the smell is heavenly. I don't know about you, but there's something about apples and cinnamon that just fill the house with just the most gorgeous scent. So I'm just gonna let these cook for 10 minutes or so, and we'll be back. The next steps. Okay, so I've quickly grabbed the Kenwood. I've added the butter. Now you need to make sure that the butter has been out of the fridge for about an hour. It's not melted, but it's that room temperature butter. I've then got 330 grams of brown sugar. I'm going to pop that in. I'm gonna pop two eggs in, like so. 
and it says a teaspoon of vanilla. Now I don't have vanilla pods, if you know what I mean, or vanilla beans. I've got vanilla essence. So I'm just gonna go with that. So I'm not sticking exactly to the recipe. I hope it's okay. And then I'm just going to switch this on and it should turn into almost like a caramel consistency. And then we are going to fold in our dried ingredients together. So let's switch this on. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed. <laughs> that is our butter, sugar and eggs all combined together. Now, I'm going to take that head off, pop it just there for a moment, and we are going to get ourselves a spatula, voila, and we are going to fold, so I can take this completely out, she says, <laughs> and we are going to fold the flour, baking powder, cinnamon and nutmeg into that mixture, wow. I can really, really smell that nutmeg. And I'm literally just going to fold that in. And this is going to be the blondie mixture. Oh wow, it's really looking good. I'll share it with you in just a moment. I'm just folding in some of those wonderful dried ingredients. And then we are going to fold in the apples. And I feel like that's when the magic happens. It's really beginning to look a bit like dough in a way. It's not as thick as dough, but it certainly resembles dough in some ways. Oh, doesn't that look absolutely delicious? Oh, yummy. Might even be a bit naughty. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness. It literally tastes like a pumpkin spice latte in cake form. Oh, absolutely divine. Now that that is all combined, we are going to go and get those gorgeous cinnamon apples. Right, <laughs> the magic is happening. Here are our gorgeous apples and they are going into that mixture. Oh wow, this looks insane. Okay, I'm going to use the same spatula. I'm just going to fold those in. Oh, that is really starting to resemble cake mixture. Look at this. Doesn't that look absolutely amazing? All those beautiful apples. I wish you could smell this through the lens. Now, Megan has suggested to use parchment paper. So I'm going to do exactly that. And take this off. She says crumple. No, I've never really heard of that before, but I suppose it's actually a really good idea because it basically means that it will stay in the tin. It's always quite difficult. So let's crumple that up. Uncrumple it. Take that little thing off. And then pop that in. Okay, I'm not really understanding the reason why you need to crumple it, but I'm going with it. Okay, so that is my parchment paper in the tin. Oh wowzers, this looks insane. Okay, I feel like they're going to be really rather gooey. Okay. Megan says that these will blow your mind. Well, they've already done that. The smell, mm, so naughty. I know I should not do it through that. It's got raw egg, but mm, mm, a tiny bit won't kill me. Okay, well, I would say that that is ready for the oven. So they are going to cook for about 35 to 40 minutes. Now every oven is different. So I would suggest to eyeball it. Um, and the top should be golden brown. So let's pop this heavenly mixture in the oven. Yum. Okay, so the blondies are in and we are going to be making the maple syrup cream cheese 
frosting. So I've got just normal Philadelphia, and in all honesty, we've gone a little bit extra with the apples, and I also added one extra egg. So I feel like I can add just that slight little bit of extra, which actually um, sums up to two of these pots of Philadelphia. Can't get this out. Come on, you know you want to. I'm going to make you into something delicious. Okay, so that is two pots of Philadelphia. I've then got one whole cup of confectioner's sugar, so that is just icing sugar. I've then got a quarter of a cup of maple syrup. Ooh, delish. And then I've got half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then we're going to switch this bad boy on and let it turn into the most insane icing. We're hoping so anyway. <laughs> Oh golly, there's me getting really excited and I haven't added in the butter. <laughs> oh my goodness me. So we need one stick, which equates to, I think about 130 grams of butter. So I'm going to pop in and eyeball it, to be honest with you, but it's roughly around about 120 grams of butter, 130. Let's switch that back on. So that is our icing made to perfection. And let me tell you, mm, it is scrumptious. So I'm gonna pop this in the fridge. Our blondies have 20 minutes and 42 seconds left to bake. And then we need to leave them for about an hour even two hours. We need to make sure that those blondies are fully cooled before spreading our frosting. Otherwise, this will melt. So, I'm gonna see you guys in a little bit. I've got a lot to catch up with Anna about because it is Friday afternoon. And then we are going to have mocktails at 4.30. And then my mother-in-law will be here. So I'm hoping that I can try and show you the frosting, obviously show you the final product, everything put together. I'm also gonna put it in that gorgeous cake dome that I have. I know this isn't a cake, but I think if they're all chopped up and looking just gorgeous, I think it will look amazing in front of the beautiful floral arrangement that we just made. Anyway. Got lots to do, so I will see you in a little bit. Okay, she is ready to come out of the oven. Please excuse the knife stabs on the top, considering we are going to be frosting her. I just wanted to check that she was cooked in the middle. She's still a little bit gooey, but it is going to be absolutely delicious. Trying to multitask. Odie wants me to kick his ball. <laughs> And we are taking these heavenly blondies out of the oven. I cannot begin to try to describe the smell. If you want that typical autumnal pumpkin spice latte, spiced apples, cinnamon, almost a hint of Christmas because of the nutmeg, then you have to bake these. Hello, my angels. It has been quite a few hours since I saw you last. Typical British Airways, my mother-in-law was an hour delayed, which actually gave me an extra hour to allow our blondies to cool. So, you know, there's always a silver lining. My icing has been in the fridge for about, two to three hours, so that has fully set. These have fully cooled, and the parchment paper has pulled away. I don't know whether I would use the parchment paper again, because it has torn away some of the blondies, and I'm not sure that if I had really smothered the baking tin in butter, whether they would have just sort of slipped right out. Um, anywho, they smell unbelievable. I have also had this recipe will do exactly what it says on Megan's website and that is blow your mind. I also love the fact that it's the apples from the orchard. <laughs> you saw me so elegantly <laughs> try to pick some from the tree as well as take them from the ground. And it's just so lovely that we can use them and bake them into the most delicious treats. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a spatula and I'm literally just going to smother the top of these blondies. And then I am going to chop them up into little squares and then place them into my beautiful cake dome. I've shared this before. This is 
I'm not actually quite sure where this is from. I will try and find um, a few similar ones. It says Côte de Provence, Château de Saison on the front. So I'm going to do just that. I will actually take the garlic clove from underneath <laughs> the camera. There we go. And then you will be able to see. But for this, I feel that you need to be able to see what I'm doing. So I've literally simply got a spatula and I'm going to just smother this in the icing. Wow. I think this is going to be amazing. Gosh, the smell is truly magical. I don't think there is quite a smell. It's sort of like, are there any other events during the year? Valentine's, Halloween, there are no other real holidays that we have. Thanksgiving, if you're in America, but Christmas, that incredible smell that our homes are filled with, whether it's cinnamon, whether it's nutmeg, whether it's the fresh smell from the pine trees at Christmas. I really do feel that there's nothing quite like that and this does just that. So I'm just spending a little moment to ice this and I'm going to decorate it really beautifully on the top with those gorgeous little swirls. And then I'm going to take a sharp knife and we are going to chop them up into little squares. <laughs> little, I mean huge, enormous, massive. Oh my goodness, I think this looks absolutely sensational. I can't recommend Megan's Instagram enough. She is so talented at what she does. There's also this amazing recipe on there that I've been dying to try, is the viral lasagna soup recipe. Yes, you heard that correctly, lasagna soup. So I just am really intrigued by it. And the imagery and the content that she shot looks so scrumptious. I just have to try it. So I'm gonna try that probably next week and I'll let you know how I get on. And maybe we'll do a little cook along next week with the lasagna soup. <laughs> so I have absolutely smothered the top of that in a serious layer of that gorgeous maple syrup and cinnamon frosting. Now let's take a sharp knife and let's chop these. So. How do we think this is gonna go? I think I may, let's pop them down there. Oh, the knife is going straight through. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to finally sprinkle the very top with cinnamon because there can never be too much. Wowzers. So the edges have come away slightly. And so you've got that lovely little I could just run away and eat every single one of these blondies, I would. Take that little bit there. So naughty. Mm. Oh my goodness. Okay. I feel like this could be messy. I'm also going to eat probably a few bits and pieces. <laughs> so I will transfer it. I'll take it over to the floral arrangement and I will show you the final setup. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my autumnal tablescape. We collected all of these gorgeous things from the gardens. We created these beautiful vases. Absolutely love how it turned out. This stunning floral arrangement, again, made from majority of things that I just collected in the garden. Those gorgeous Annabelle hydrangeas, the lilies, the branches, and then of course, the mind-blowing maple syrup, apple, cinnamon blondies. Absolutely mind-blowing. Megan says so herself and I am absolutely obsessed. I will leave the details of the recipe below because trust me, you need to try these. I have actually just sprinkled a touch more cinnamon on the top because when was there ever enough cinnamon? <laughs> but Mark and his mother are literally just about to arrive. I've got a few little snackettes out, a few little crispies, dips, olives, two champagne glasses and a white wine glass, that beautiful arrangement, and I'm just obsessed. 
They look absolutely sensational. So Mark and his mother are literally just about to arrive. So I'm gonna sign off for this evening and I will see you guys tomorrow. Hello my angels. I'm sorry that I didn't film that much last night. By the time Mark and his mum came home, do you know what, it was late, her flight was delayed, and to be honest with you, poured a glass of wine and had a good old catch up. So I'm sorry that I didn't film last night. And then today, do you know what, we've just had the most lazy day, which has just been absolutely divine. So I've actually taken a quiet moment. I've been pottering in my bedroom, popped on a little bit of makeup. I'm constantly in this jumpsuit. And I get so many questions about what I wear at home. What do I wear on a daily basis? What do I wear when I'm working from home? And do you know what? I've got this like constant struggle between wanting to be super comfortable, <laughs> first rule, most important rule, to also looking stylish, also being able to look smart enough that I can have a Zoom call or a meeting and something that I can be active in. So I've done a big Halara order and I thought that I would, as I've got time today, unbox it with you, which is really, really nice. So if you guys don't know about Halara, they are an incredible female founded brand and they believe in not only do things need to be super comfortable, but they also need to be stylish. And so they design the most beautiful collection of women's wear, all the way from active wear, lounge wear, and actually stuff that you can go out in. So I've done a little bit of an order with working from home in mind and yeah I picked up some gorgeous bits and pieces so I thought that I would do an unboxing and then kind of show you what I wear on a daily basis at home. So first things first I picked up some leggings. Now these are leggings that I could either wear out out or I can wear lounging around the house with a big gorgeous cozy roll neck jumper. I just really liked the waistband in these and they looked super super seamless. Also got a really interesting design at the back. They're one of those uh, leggings that sort of like hold your bottom up. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they look like on. Then I saw these trousers. Now you all know that I am obsessed with high-waisted wide leg trousers and they are something that I live in at home. But again, like I said, I don't want to spend a huge amount of money on them. I also don't want to waste potentially a luxury item whilst I'm just wearing it at home. So when I saw these, I thought that they would be absolutely perfect. So they're in this gorgeous, almost like rose dusky pink. They are high-waisted, they are wide leg, and they've got this elastic at the back, so they are super, super comfortable. So I'm really looking forward to trying those on. I'm thinking like potentially having a little cream polar neck underneath, or potentially a body. This I saw on the website, and I feel like I'm either going to love this or I'm going to hate it. So let's take a look. Ooh, I love the colour. God, that's gorgeous. So I picked up this stunning round neck dress. Now it's quite long. I am going to try this on for you. So I'm not going to stand up because uh, I can't because the bed's behind me. <laughs> and I want you to be able to see it. But it's got these gorgeous like wooden buttons. It's in this really, really soft loungy type fabric but I really like the design feature. It slightly goes out and you have like a fuller skirt at the bottom. But how gorgeous is that? It's like the perfect at home dress. And I really, really love this color and the natural features of the wooden buttons. I think it's so sweet. These are, oh wow, I love these. So again, anything that is comfortable. I feel like when we're on Zoom, you can only see it from the waist up. So I also picked up these super, super soft, 
almost like trackies but smarter than trackies if you know what I mean I bet all of you are like oh my goodness I can never imagine Lenora in a pair of trackies well I don't really wear like normal trackies <laughs> how many times can you say trackies in one vlog but when I saw these I thought that they would be absolutely perfect so they're in this gorgeous like midnight navy I'm almost thinking like a navy roll neck leotard underneath so you show your body off and your silhouette and then they're wasted and then you've got the super comfort of the wide leg and I wish you could feel this fabric it's like a combination of like that jersey fabric but with a tiny bit of elasticity so you've got that lovely stretch and softness to it so I think those are going to be extremely well worn and then another pair of trousers that really caught my eye are these again pinky vibe and they are a high-waisted three-quarter length in this gorgeous like pale dusky pink as you can see from the house and my kitchen that I love pink and I love incorporating it into things that I wear every day it's most certainly my happy color and it's one of those colors that really work with my complexion so I thought that they were fab oh I must have been feeling frisky when I did this order Gosh, that is fantastic. So I also got this navy blue little crop top and I thought on the days where I'm feeling mm, rather jazzy, I could wear a top like this either with a pair of gym leggings or the navy trousers. I think that that could look really cool. So I'm gonna do a very quick try on just so that you can see and to give you guys an answer to the question that you have all been asking me what do i wear what do i like to wear and what would you see me in every day so you see me in something comfortable something that looks stylish and something that i can do my everyday activities so when I'm at home, I am potentially on a dog walk. I'm sat at my desk. I might be doing a workout. And so I need an outfit that can do all of those things in one as well as look good. I sometimes have to get in my car at the sort of spur of the minute and rush down here, rush down there. And sometimes I don't have time to go and spritz myself up. So I need to look good from the offset. So that is why I did a Halara order. So let's pop these on and show you what they look like. First outfit is on and I absolutely love these wide leg trousers. You always see me in a wide leg trouser, but I feel like it's all about the fit. Now I love how wide they are. There's nothing worse than having a wide leg trouser that just doesn't do the trick. It doesn't say what it's meant to do. And I love how the fabric just glides across my bottom. Again, the length is so versatile. So it comes just below my ankle, but you have also got those little slits. So if you wanted to wear a pair of slippers, even a pair of trainers, I would also style this with a pair of like heeled boots. And I think it would look fabulous. Now I've paired it with what Halara calls their tofu, which is the color, <laughs> mesh yoga top. I think it's so smart, this material. It's slightly sheer. And as you can see, it's got like an inbuilt bra system. So it's so supportive. And like I said, Halara really fits into your everyday. Whether you are dashing out for meetings and you want to look smart, but also if you are a really active person. So I'm going on a dog walk, I'm going to reformers, and I need to have something that fits in with my entire lifestyle. And I feel like this outfit does just that. It's super comfortable. It's very working from home vibes, yet it's also super athletic. I could literally pull on a pair of leggings and I'd be ready for the gym. Anyway, let's try on this dress because I'm so intrigued by it. I think I may have found my favorite working from home dress. Look at this. So this is Halara's maxi casual dress. I love the design. The long sleeves, so I'm gonna be super warm. This beautiful design where it sort of really, really hugs the female figure, goes to the waist, and then it flares out. So you've got this a little bit more, I would say, full skirt. It comes to the ankle, which is so, so handy, again, for this time of year. 
I can pop on a pair of slippers, I can wear a pair of trainers, but equally, you all know how obsessed I am with chocolate and this colour goes so well. I pop on my chocolate coat, a pair of leather boots, and this would be a vibe, an absolute vibe. I also love this like round neckline and then they've designed these beautiful, almost natural wooden buttons. I think it's absolutely beautiful. It's casual, it's comfy. You've got a little bit of hint of sexiness because of how it just hugs that gorgeous female figure. I'm obsessed. If this comes in another colour, I am most certainly picking it up. So I'm going to pop the next outfit on. We're going to see what it looks like. Now most of you are probably thinking, I'm never going to see Leonora in a pair of trackies. But she does, and these are the type of tracksuit bottoms you would see me in. I would say they're a lot more like a palazzo trouser. So you've got that elasticated waistband, you've got these incredible pockets. Now they're not pockets where you go like that, they are pockets that you go like that. They are huge and they are absolutely gorgeous. You can have your phone in there, you can have your lip gloss, you can have just about anything in these pockets. Now with palazzo pants, I feel that they're really versatile. Now you could literally wear them at home like I'm wearing today with this gorgeous top, but I would potentially wear like a navy polar neck body under this, a gorgeous like a bomber jacket and a pair of navy suede boots, and this would be an absolute vibe. But today I have styled it with Halara's ribbed halter strap yoga top and I think it looks absolutely incredible. This is such a vibe. I also love the little thumbs. I feel like these two items are so versatile that you can style them up and style them down however you wish. I love it. Check these out. Are they not seriously body sculpting? So these are Halara's seamless black bottom lifting leggings and I'm obsessed. They are so comfortable. They literally feel like tracksuit bottoms but yet they are holding things together without being really tight and sucked in. I could have actually sized down in these but to be honest with you I'm going to be using them to just lounge around the house and they are so comfortable. I also love the length, they are full length. You could actually pull them up if you wanted them three quarter like so, so they are really versatile. But I like having a super long legging, I feel like it's really elongating. Now this top is an absolute vibe. Check this out. So this is their open back bar, almost like a ballerina sports top. I think it's gorgeous. So I have actually tucked it in, but you could have it sort of slightly higher up if you wanted to and have your midriff out. If you don't want to do that, then you can tuck it in like so. Sometimes, <laughs> it depends upon what time of day and how naughty I've been, but there's nothing worse than having, we all have it because we all have skin, but there's nothing worse than having like that roll sticking out. No, 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 no. So on days like that, I want to be able to have the option where I can tuck in and I can be warm. I don't want to show my midriff. I'm not feeling confident. And then equally, there are other days where I'm like, oh, is that an app I see? If that is an app, we want to share it. We want to show it off. There aren't many of those days, but I want to have the option. And this is just gorgeous. The fabric is also that really silky sports athletic fabric. And I just love Halara's brand ethos. They lift women up. They inspire women. It's a female founder brand. They design clothes for all different areas of your life to ensure you not only feel good, but you also look good. And I think if that isn't an incredible brand motto, then I don't know what else is. It really sort of like reached out and spoke to me. You all know that I, I feel like I was put on this earth to try and lift people up, make you smile and inspire women that they can do it and um, they will do it. And when I saw that Halara's brand motto was that, I then thought, okay, let's see the website, let's take a look at the stuff, let's try the stuff on and let's fall in love with it. And I have done just that with you guys today. Now they have been so kind and they are offering the most incredible discount code. So I will leave 
all the details in that description box down below. You will know that I link everything that you see and if there isn't a direct link, maybe it's out of stock or maybe it's old season, um, then I will link very, very similar items. But I feel like this vlog has been so nice. I've had time to actually chat to you. We did the most beautiful, very whimsical, woodlandy floral arrangement, a full tablescape together, and we baked the most delicious sweet treats. Honestly, they are absolutely scrumptious and worth every single bite. It's so nice that when you bake uh, along with me, you take pictures and you post them on Instagram stories. It, honestly, it makes my day. And for those of you who went to the effort to make the cinnamon rolls, my heart goes out to you. They are definitely a labour of love, but you will now know how delicious they were. And the best thing about my maple syrup cinnamon apple blondies is that they don't take that much time. It's all about the cooling period though, because I feel like the inside stays really sort of like sticky and super moist. I know a lot of people don't like that word, but trust me, they are, and they are so heavenly let me tell you so i truly can't recommend them enough and then we did the most almighty halara try on and unpacking but i truly hope you have enjoyed this vlog if you have please leave a little comment below i love reading through the comments and i try my very best to reply to absolute everybody if you have any questions on the clothes how they fit the fabrics all of those details then i will of course get back to you as well as leave all of the information and the direct links down below please give it a little like if you can and if you haven't already please please hit that subscribe button it just means that i can create content that fingers crossed you are all enjoying watching anyway i'm gonna trot downstairs in my new halara outfit i have a feeling marcus is going to love this and i'm gonna spend the evening with mark and his mother so i will see you on the next one and as i always say sending you so much love